Uh, one more example. In example 3 it says determine the key features of this function f of x equals 10 over x squared minus 9. And This example um, illustrates how there aren't always restrictions on the domain. And remember you find restrictions on the domain by finding any value that would make that denominator expression, the x squared plus 9 in this case, 0. And, and there are no numbers. That's why it says it cannot equal 0. There are no vertical asymptotes, so the domain is the entire set of real numbers. Uh, if I wanted to try to solve for x here, I would subtract 9 from both sides. And so I would get x squared um, cannot equal negative 9. And you can't take the square root in the real numbers of a negative. So there are no values that make that denominator equal to 0. So there's no vertical asymptotes. The domain is the entire set of real numbers. Now, if you try to find intercepts, if you set the function equal to 0, there are no solutions to this. There's no number that makes 10 over x squared plus 9 equal to 0. Uh, the only way you could have that equal to 0 is if there was an x up here, like if I had 10x equals, I could have 0 for an x, and 10 times 0 would equal 0. But if there's only a constant in the numerator, that's the part that has to be able to get a value of 0 for it to equal 0. So there are no x-intercepts at all. There is a y-intercept, though, because if we put 0 in place of x here and here, 10 over 0 squared plus 9 is actually just 10 ninths. And so just above 1, 10 ninths is 1 and 1 ninth. Just above 1, there is a y-intercept. So that's where it goes to the y-axis. Now as x approaches a large positive or a large negative, the value of 10 over x squared plus 9 tends towards 0 from the positive side. And just to illustrate that, bring my graphing calculator up here again. If I type in 10 divided by, well, let's say even 10 squared plus 9. That's not really that big an x value, but notice that the uh, function value is uh, getting close to 0. It's becoming a large, sorry, a number quite close to 0. If I make the number bigger, let's say we did 50. 0 0.00398. If I made it even larger, let's say I made it 500. Put another 0 in there. Now this means actually 0 0.00003999985, etc. So it's actually getting close to zero. This actually is, is in scientific notation. And if I do the same thing except this, make this negative 500. Notice it's exactly the same value. See, if I square 500 or negative 500, I still get the same value. And so it's a, both of these, as it approaches infinity or negative infinity, they're both approaching 0 from above. So there's a horizontal asymptote of y equals 0, and the graph approaches it from above to the far left and the far right. And so the graph must look like this. As you approach the far left, it's, it's approaching 0, but staying above the x-axis, where y equals 0. And the same thing happens to the right. Now, the range for this function would be the entire set of real numbers, but there's a very small restriction here, or narrow restriction. Of course, y has to be greater than 0, but it has to be less than 10 ninths. So the y values are just bigger than 0, but the largest they can be is the 10 ninths. That's the highest the graph goes. So y is greater than 0, but less than or equal to 10 ninths. And that's the end of the lesson.